In today's gospel, the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus with a question on fasting. They said, the disciples of John the Baptist are fasting. The disciples of the Pharisees, our disciples, are fasting. Why are the disciples of Jesus not fasting? The question comes from a basic religious understanding. And this understanding talks about two worlds. The world of paradise. The world of the Garden of Eden. The world where God lives. The world where there is perfection. And if we go back to Genesis, Adam and Eve were formerly living in paradise with God, where there is perfection, where there is completeness. But Adam and Eve sinned. Thus, they were banished from that world into our imperfect world, into a world of materiality, into a world of corruption, into a world of imperfection. So God is in paradise, God is in heaven, and the Jews believe the descendants of Adam are in an imperfect world where there is corruption, where there is imperfection, when there is mortality. May katapusan, may kamatayan, may pagdurusa. The action, therefore, to constantly remember the world of God, to constantly reach out to the world of perfection, to constantly connect or attempt to connect to the lost paradise became a religious project. Hence, people of this world need to pray. People of this world need spiritual exercises in order not to forget the perfect world of paradise. One such exercise is fasting. What happens when you fast? You forego temporarily a physical need, the need to eat, the need to be full, the need to be satisfied. And once you forego temporarily this need, this basic necessity, you remember that, ah, I remember I also have spiritual needs. I remember the world of perfection. By fasting, I must remember God. The challenges of our new world becomes multiplied. Why? Aside from the world that we aspire for, the world of perfection, and our imperfect world, the world of material reality, we have created a virtual world. A world that is not entirely physical. A world that you cannot touch. A world that is created by the need for social distancing. But nonetheless, although it is intangible, although it is not physical, this virtual world is not the heavenly world. 
and we bring our learners, we bring children into this new reality where they, in their basic education, need to be educated in the virtual world and try as much as possible to approximate, to recreate a normal physical classroom. Harinawa, magampanan nating malampasan ang pagbabagong ito para patuloy pa rin matuto ang ating mga mag-aaral. But even if we are successful in bridging the virtual world into not just to long for the physical world, namimiss ko ng classrooms, namimiss ko na si teacher, namimiss ko na yung playground, namimiss ko na yung recess, at marami sa mga estudyante, mamimiss yung baon nila. Kasi ba't naman magbabaon, nasa bahay sila. Okay, so wala mo ng allowance. Despite missing the physical realities of normal education, teachers, educators have the added responsibility to remind students of the ideals, of the longing, of the perfection of a heavenly world. Kahit may virtual world, at inaasam-asam natin sa virtual world ang physical classrooms, ang physical schools, ang physical presence ng classmates and teachers and principals and school personnel. We remember that at the top of our longing are heavenly ideals, the longing to be good, the continuous striving to be respectful, the acknowledgement that education, parents, family, all that is good are gifts from above. Na kahit nasa virtual world na tayo, patuloy pa rin tayong nagpapasalamat sa mahabaging Diyos, sa mapagpalang Diyos, sa Diyos na patuloy tayong binibiyayaan kahit sa gitna ng pandemya. Dear students, we, adults, have not seen challenges that you face right now. Nung panahon namin, dalawa lang yan. Imperfect, material, physical world and our longing for the perfect, heavenly, paradise world of God. Kayo ngayon, Nakikita namin, may kalangitan, may material reality, at may virtual world. Help your teachers as we go through this new normal. Help educators respond to your needs. Teach educators how to respond to this multiple realities. Dahil inuulit ko, wala ito noong kabataan namin. This is new wine skin. This is new challenge. This is new difficulty. But a challenge that admiringly we look to you and we see kaya they are adapting they are learning mas mabilis nga mga estudyante magtuto ng mga uh, online classrooms online platforms ang bilis 
ng learning capacity ng students. And we admire you for going through this difficulty. We encourage you to continue learning, to continue connecting with your friends, to continue that respect and high regard for your teachers, to continue valuing that which we have valued, but admittedly at a time when there are less complications. Let us be one in prayer as we go through this different reality. The challenges are not insurmountable. The challenges may be real, but all the more, the grace of God, the protection of God, the guidance of God, and the gift of wisdom from God is all the more real. I congratulate you, dear students, at the opening once again of your school year. I congratulate you for your resiliency. I congratulate you for your perseverance. Again, it is a time of adjustment, but nonetheless, it is likewise a time of grace, a time of new realities, a time of the ever, still a time of God's ever loving presence, even and especially in our educational system. Let us all stand.